Welcome to the Seeds of Success podcast, hosted by Dottie San Martin and myself, Orla Rivera. This show is your weekly dose of knowledge, insights, and actionable tips to transform sinners into striking successes. Whether you are a seasoned industry professional or just stepping onto the lanes, we've got you covered. In today's episode, we dive deep into the world of self-serve technology and how it can propel your center's growth. Joining us is Rosa Katz, Director of Customer Experience and Services at Cubica AMF. So grab your headphones, roll up your sleeves, and let's get busy. Welcome, Rosa. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. So excited yeah. to be with you guys. I listen to the podcast all the time. So kind of strange to uh, be a guest, but excited to be here nonetheless. Well, we're excited to have you. And the topic today, uh, you know, is one that I think that our listeners are really going to benefit from. Self-service technologies become increasingly prevalent across various industries. Interactive self-service kiosks allow customers to independently place orders, check in for a lane, and check in for a reservation. And it really transforms how we engage with our customers. Yeah. And so why would listeners want to consider adopting a more self-service business model and incorporate a kiosk into their operations? So this is a really good question and a really good place to start because first, we're really just talking about self-service technology and anywhere that you can leverage that to improve the customer experience. And there's really been a just a rising tide of consumer acceptance of using self-service. Hey, I read somewhere that like more than 65% of customers prefer to use a kiosk when given the opportunity. Um, I mean, that's a big number. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just think that what you're seeing is, is that consumers, it's really become what's not just sort of an acceptance and not just a must have, but it's really become like, or a nice to have, but it's really become a must. Um, you know, it's interesting if you look at a little bit of the history of kiosk, right? United introduced the first kiosk at an airport in 2001 and McDonald's introduced them in 2003. And so, We've got 20 years of history. And so they really started in grocery stores. Um, we started seeing them in fast food, airports. But now they're in retailers. They're in entertainment venues. Customers want the option of a self-service kiosk, right? They want to be able to complete mm -hmm. the tasks on their own, like sign-in waivers or check-in. And they want to make their own purchases at their own pace. Mm -hmm. um, and what we saw is that this was really pushed forward um, by growing labor shortages, increases in wages better technology on the horizon. So it's just become more expected. Um, it's more accepted. We're used to also doing things online and on our own, right? We make our own online purchases. We use e-commerce. So it's really just a part of really business's growth plan at this point. And, and it becomes a solution. So what, what are some of the key benefits of a kiosk? That's also a great question. So the first thing is it improves the customer experience, right? You know, if you think about it, what does it do? Shorter lines, uh, less wait time. Long lines really frustrate customers. And when they see a long line, sometimes they leave. And also they decide not to wait in the line. So when you have things like food and beverage, they're not going to get in that line to go purchase that food because the line is too long. And if yeah. you think about it and our environment in particular, when a lot of it is timed, getting out of that environment, going and waiting in a line. I mean, you're losing on that experience because someone has to go get in line and wait. So it's really about that experience. It also gives the customer an option of choice at their fingertips, right? So they get to make choices. It's without judgment, without pressure. And you get to leverage technology to do the transaction so that you can redeploy your team to service and help the customer in their experience. Um, another benefit is, of course, increased sales. It allows you to promote your offers consistently, accurately. Um, there's so many available options. Every single customer gets to see what those options and those offers are. It presents the offer in a way that's very visual. It's easy to understand. And the upsell opportunities that are seen, they don't drop off because the customer or the center gets busy, right? So when your center is busy and your staff is really wanting to service the line and work the line quickly, they start dropping off on sharing what those upsell opportunities are. They, they don't tell the customer about what all the offers are. So this is something that allows the customer to see it every time and they're given that choice. Um, and at the very least, when they're not in use, they're very impactful uh, in a very visual way to help you with marketing, advertising. You can share what your offers are, your promotions, and your programs. 
So I think customer service and overall just increased sales are probably the two biggest benefits. Yeah. And I think, I think just like you said, the visual of it, you know, you could use your own images where you're putting your food, you know, you're not just getting those, um, what do you call them? Just like you, you could use custom photos where you're able to customize it so people could see actually your burgers. You know, they don't want to order a burger and see what's on the photo, order a burger and then something else comes. So you could use your own actual photos on there. Yeah, absolutely. Right. More than the stock. Yeah, for sure. Everybody wants to see what your food looks like, right? Not get their food and then say, oh, that's not what it looked like on the kiosk. But, you know, another thing is a kiosk is a a really great marketing tool. Um, And when you start to bring a kiosk kind of into your sales fold, it, you know, 70% of customers say that when they're in a store, that the messages sway their decisions. So if somebody walks in and they see that you're having a great summer promotion on your kiosk, then they're going to naturally want to inquire about that because they just saw it and it looked pretty appealing on the kiosk. So I think that's another great benefit. Yeah, and let's talk about one of my favorite benefits, more money to the bottom line, um, <laughs> ROI, re- reduced overhead and business cost. Yeah, Orly, I think that's everybody's favorite benefit. Um, But I mean, aside from what we talked about and what Dottie mentioned already in regarding uh, power marketing and selling capabilities, it also helps with a lot of operational efficiencies, right? So if you think about um, better staff utilization, right, looking at really where you need a human and where technology is helping you. So this creates an engagement opportunity for your employee and it actually increases employee satisfaction. Because the employee feels like they're really making a difference here. And so you're looking at just using your staff in a better way. There's also less food and beverage waste because of order accuracy, which was an interesting thing that we learned. When the customer is putting in their own order, you're ensuring that it's right and you have less error. And so there's very little that's going back to the kitchen because it's accurate. And then I think a final piece is really just speed, not just for the customer, mm-hmm. but for moving customers through your operations seamlessly, right? Reducing that lane downtime, which is something that, especially in many operations, that's the biggest thing, turning the lane over and how quickly you can turn the lane over because that downtime is money. Absolutely, it is. And, you know, I want to go back to something that you said just previously about that it takes a little bit of the burden off of the staff member. It, that also equates to a much better experience for, for the consumer. And so that consumer is going to remember that and they're going to want to come back more often. So naturally, that means more money to the bottom line, which is, as we've heard, that's Orly's favorite part. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so awesome. So, you know, one of my favorite things about a kiosk is it's so reliable. It is absolutely the top notch salesman. I mean, it never calls in sick. It never asks for a raise. It always knows how to properly position your items. And it's a, it's a great tool. It knows how to upsell. It's not afraid to try to upsell a ticket. Right. And so to me, I think it is one of the key employees in your center. Um, and it doesn't require you know, a lot of handholding and, and, and so on and so forth. So I think the kiosk really is just another part of your staff and you should look at it that way. Um, and, but just the natural ability to upsell is really good. And, and Rosa, I, uh, you had shared a story with me not too long ago about how a kiosk really has the power to upsell. Do you mind sharing that with our listeners? Oh, I'm happy to. It's actually a really great story. So uh, very simply, we have a customer that has the kiosk and uh, they always had a package and the package always had the opportunity. It had French fries, but they had the opportunity to upsell to tater tots. And it's always existed. It's always been one of their options, but very infrequently did they have customers choose to upsell to the tater tots until it went on the kiosk. Once it went on the kiosk and when customers were entering this package and they were given the option for an upsell to choose tater tots, more customers started choosing tater tots. So much so that in the first weekend that they launched with the kiosk and they made this option available to the customer, they ran out of tater tots. So they had to go out to the local store. Yeah, they had to go out to the local store and buy tater tots because the demand was so high and actually it's one of their best sellers now. Wow. They introduced the the kiosk introduced it. Yeah. You know, the the other thing that 
that I think is worth noting is a kiosk really gives you, you know, when you have a kiosk in your center, it kind of gives you that satisfaction of knowing if somebody calls in in the snack bar, for example, you don't have to worry about what am I going to do? It may not be a long-term solution that you want to, you know, the whole day, just serve all your customers from the kiosk, but maybe that is what you want to do. And you now have ability to let your kiosk kind of pull up that slack when you need it. If it's front desk, you know, if there's somebody that needs to step away for a couple of hours, no problem. You can reroute your customers to where you are utilizing that kiosk really for one of the key benefits of having it is that you have another set of hands on board really. So um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that was worth noting to our listeners just in case it's, it's really a comfort level. And Rosa, what are a few points our listeners should consider in order um, to maximize their success with a kiosk? Ooh, this is uh, one of my favorite topics. So (laughs) first and foremost, right, location, location, location. The placement of the kiosk is truly critical to its adoption and utilization and ultimately the success of that kiosk in your center. You've got to place it in high traffic locations, right? Within the customer experience flow, that means within the journey. While your restaurants might be high traffic, they're not exactly the best place for a kiosk because they're not within the flow of the customer's journey within your center. So that's something to consider. Then you want to look at, as I mentioned, flow and visibility. They've got to be front and center. If you come in at the front door and you've got stanchions that lead to your front desk and the kiosk is placed somewhere on a wall in the back, The customer's first indication is to walk up to the desk, not go utilize the kiosk. Um, So you want to just make it convenient for access, right? You ensure you want to ensure that it's not blocked by anything. There's no tables or garbage cans or other devices in front of it because you want to make it easy for customers to walk up to. You know, you don't want them to have to walk up, walk past a table of people eating in order to go use the kiosk because that's where you have wall space. So I think that's a really important thing. The next thing is really just looking at how you're leveraging your team members, right? Your kiosk is meant to supplement your workforce, not replace it. So you really need to deploy your staff to assist in other ways, right? They allow they allow you to take your service up a notch. Yes. So they can be available to greet, answer questions, deal with issues as they show up, and let the kiosk do the transaction, right? So you need to consider having greeters by the kiosk. Um, They can encourage customers to use the kiosk and increase the adoption. And in particular, if this is a change in your model, you want to encourage them to go use it because once they start using it and they're comfortable with it, they'll go there again. If your model has always been you walk in and you go to the front desk, you're really kind of training the customer to do something different and a greeter helps you do that. Um, they'll also help with the apprehension around perhaps using technology. Some people are just not comfortable using that type of technology. And it really allows you to use the kiosk in a way without compromising the service, right? You can still deliver a great service experience and the kiosk adds to that experience. And, you know, the other thing that, that I'll mention is there are some people that say, oh, no, I like having that personal touch in my business. By redeploying that staff, you still have that opportunity to keep that personal, very personal experience. It's just in a different format. And you're dealing with an employee that has a, has less stress on them. So that, that right. interaction is a lot more comfortable to your staff member. Right. So. And, and when they feel like they're creating a better experience for the customer, that improves that customer or that employee satisfaction, right? Because they 100%. feel like they're making an impact. They feel like they're making a difference, right? I had this, I had a great night because I was able to make people happy because at the end of the day, that's the business we're in. We're in the entertainment business and our goal is to create memories and make people happy. So that's what they want to do, right? Yes. They, they don't want to be behind the technology. They want to help you take advantage of it. Yeah. Yes. And that helps keep your staff members longer. You know, the, there's less turnover when they're happy. We all know that that's a fact. So, Absolutely. You know, yeah. And, and I've also noticed that sometimes, uh, you know, when we're talking about how to be successful and things that you need to be mindful of going into it. Uh, one of the things that, that I like to remind customers of is don't just 
put it in and expect people to naturally gravitate to it, right? You've right. got to show them it's there or draw attention to it in some way. So um, I, I think that's really important as well. Yeah, and that's a very important part because as we talked about a moment ago, when your operation is that customers are used to coming in and going straight to a desk. And, and if you've ever been in an entertainment center, that's kind of the way we've all been driven. It doesn't just yeah. have bowling or entertainment. We're driven to go to a desk and someone helps us, right? So you're changing that now for them. So the signage really points customers to the fact that this is a new place where you can actually check in. And as we talked about with customer acceptance of it and just being familiar with them, when they see that signage, they're going to go up, they're going to go touch it because they're used to working with that technology, but they got to know that it's there for that purpose, right? So you want to drive them there. Absolutely. So Rosa, let me ask you this. What do you think are some of the most common deployment mistakes? So I think the first thing is this, um, keeping staff in former positions, right? You still need your staff. Um, but you don't need them doing the same tasks as they were doing before. You can have them walk around, take on a new activity or role. Uh, they should be engaging with guests. They should be delivering great guest experiences, right? So you want to make sure that you want you have employees that are now doing other activities. Because if you have four people standing at the desks and four kiosks, the customer is going to walk up to the yeah. desk. Right. So totally you want to agree. redeploy them and let them, you know, be in a place. I always say, put them in a place where you want a human and put the technology in a place where it doesn't need a human, right? Where it's just transactional. Um, the next thing is really just putting those devices in and assuming your customers are just going to start using them. It's very much what we were just talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You have to bridge the gap between the human and the technology. Some users are just simply reluctant or uncomfortable. Um, and so they're going to come to that counter, right? And if you have four people standing there, they're definitely coming up to that counter. So those best practices, um, like readers and signage and communication, acquaints the customer and encourages them. Um, so you got to make sure that you're not just kind of putting them in and then thinking that customers are just going to naturally gravitate to them. We, we basically have to retrain our customers as well, that we've taken on a new way of doing business and this is how it's going to be done now. And, you know, they've, bowling has been done a certain way for many years and, and we have to undo that a little bit now. Absolutely, Dottie. Absolutely. And, and that's really just another common mistake um, that we put in those kiosks and we don't incorporate them into our operational model. Yeah. Right. Um, we don't look for the ways that they're going to improve the customer's experience. So you really have to look at making changes to your customer flow, looking at how easy it is for that customer to make purchase. And, and my suggestion, and I always share this, is, you know, experience it yourself. Use yeah. your kiosks, place the orders, identify what's missing in the journey, implement it. Right. We had um, just an example of, you know, at the when you walk up to the snack bar, they order a glass of water. Well, you know, the person behind the desk is, or the person at the snack bar is just getting a glass and putting in water. They're not charging you for that. But now from the kiosk, you don't have that human that's doing that for you. So you got to put a cup of water on the kiosk as an option. It's just one of those things that you learn. And we learn that by simply putting the kiosk in place, using it, and then going, how do I get a glass of water? And we were like, aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. put a glass of water on this as an option. So I, I, those are important things. And I think the last thing really, really that's important is you can't just put your kiosk in and forget about them, right? You can't just set it and forget it. They need attention. They need review. You've got to look at how they're performing, right? You've got to look at the data. What does it indicate, right? Your metrics tell you the story. And you can get all of these metrics in the Q portal because our kiosks in particular, that data is ending up in the Q portal. You can see how they're performing. Are they underperforming? Maybe it's not in a good location. Um, maybe it doesn't have the right offers for its locations. Maybe they're not the right ones. Um, and you'll also have to really just look at how customers are engaging and what they're using mostly. So if you know this one is high performance for food and beverage and the other one isn't, that's a good indication that perhaps customers are going to that kiosk for another reason. And that's why you want to change what the offers are there. And I think if all else fails, sit by the kiosks, 
see how and when your customers are interacting with it. Ask your customers questions about why they did or didn't use that kiosk. Absolutely. I think having that interaction with the customer also, you know, that that's another form of having that very personal uh, relationship and the customer understanding. This is important to they're asking me for my feedback. So I must be an important part of their business. And I think that goes a long way as well. Absolutely. And Rosa, what are some points you would like to leave our listeners with today that are considering incorporating a kiosk into their operation? Yeah, really good question, Orly. I think the first, uh, if I was thinking about it, right, the first thing is, number one, that self-service is just no longer a nice to have. It's really just an expectation of your customer. And if you are all walk up to the desk and wait in the line, I think you might be missing out on a particular customer base, especially younger people whose attention span is about this big, right? You want to create these opportunities. They want to walk up. They want to be able to make their choices and get to the experience faster. So that's the first thing. I think you also want to think about it that, you know, in terms of kiosks help you generate more revenue. Customers spend more when they're in control, when they can make their choices. In fact, when a kiosk is available and used for purchases, it shows a yield of up to 30% in higher purchases. So customers, it, it's shown that customers are just spending more on those devices. So you want to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, as we talked about, kiosks just lead to lower costs, right? So help, let them help you fill the gap between your business operations and selling. And I think lastly, leveraging the technology to assist you to improve. Don't just set it. Don't just set it to forget it. Like anything else in, in your business, it needs attention, it needs evaluation, and you should be making changes if necessary. It's like your game room. You move those games around, you evaluate how they're performing. Well, the kiosk is the same, right? You want to just evaluate it and make sure that the technology is working for you. Right. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to add one more thing. One of the, one of the things that I've heard um, some of our kiosk users say is to keep it simple. Make sure like your your offerings and stuff are very simple for people to understand because that makes a big difference. And especially, you know, we're going into the summer months and, and when you are uh, having families come in and you want it to be a very simple process for them to see, you know, and like go back to those pictures and those images you know, the, the, the kiddos can actually help with, with using that kiosk and point to what they want. So keep it really simple and direct, um, I think, and you'll, you'll wind up getting a, a better result from your kiosk. Agreed. And actually, the summer is a perfect time because as your customers and as your volume increases, it's such a great time to see how people are interacting with the device and to really get feedback from them. It's actually even a great idea to put a little survey on the receipt and let yep. customers tell you what the experience was like. Yes, that's a great idea. A great idea. Well, Rosa, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope our listeners that are considering going with a more self-service model and incorporating kiosks into their operations have uh, been exposed to the, to a few things that are going to make them think things through a little bit and make sure that they are being successful with their purchase. So. Uh, Thank you very much for being here. Listeners, as we wrap up this episode, uh, this episode of Seeds of Success featuring Rosa, let's just recap our mission here with Seeds of Success. As you know, our goal is really simple. It's to empower you, our listeners, with practical tips, innovative ideas, and game-changing insights. We want your bowling center to reach new heights of success. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a fresh face to our industry, remember to spread the word. Share this podcast, which can be found really wherever you get your favorite podcasts, and and share it with your entire team. Just like planting seeds, folks, the more you sow, the greater the harvest. So until next time, keep making bowling amazing and putting more money to the bottom line.